Question one. So what I always tend to do, even if I've got a fractional power, is I just like to write out each sort of part. So one to a half. Now you can actually do half c zero. You can't you know that won't work on your calculator, but we'll we'll worry about that in a second. Um, so half c one, half c two, half c three. Okay, it did say the first four terms, and then we're just going to multiply those up, and then we've got one. So it's one less than this. So just write everything out. Don't try and actually solve anything yet. Don't try and work anything out. Right, just write them down. And, and then if we just write the other down, so then that would be 8x to the 1, 8x to the 2, 8x to the 3. Now think about, okay, so what actually happens to each one? Well, anything C0 is going to be 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And anything to the power of 0 is, is 1. So just work out all the stuff that you can do without really thinking about it. Half C1. Well, anything C1 is is going to be this bit here. Like if, you, if you're not sure, like do 5C1 or something and you'll see that the answer is 5. So that's going to be a half. Now, if I look at all of this column, 1 to the minus a half, 1 to the minus 3 over 2, 1 to the minus 5 over 2, they're all going to be 1, aren't they? Okay, I'm just going to fill those in. If you're not sure, just check them on your calculator. A little think about those. These ones are quite easy to fill in. 8x to the 1. Okay, so that's just 8x. 64x squared. And then 8 cubed is 512x cubed. Okay, so just do all the stuff that we can do. We haven't really got to think too much. Right, okay. Now the slightly tricky bit is, is thinking about these bits here. So let's take the first one. We've got a half C2. Now, what you should know is you should know if I write NCR, that's equal to N factorial, N minus R factorial, R factorial. Okay, right. So let's just put this into practice over here. So that therefore, that gives me a half factorial. Now, don't worry, you can't, obviously you can't do half factorial. But in maths, things quite often conveniently cancel themselves out. So here, you're going to have a half minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. OK, now let's try and think, right, what does half factorial mean, if, if you could work it out? Well, it would mean a half times, then it's one less, isn't it, all the time? So times minus a half, and then times minus... 3 over 2, and then you'd like keep going, wouldn't you? Okay, so and then that's going to be divided by well, look, half minus 2 that's minus 3 over 2 factorial, right? You might just see why I've just left that bit over there. 2 factorial is just 2. So that whole thing, that bit just cancels with that bit. So that gives us a half times minus a half, so it's minus a quarter. And then dividing that by 2. Okay, so if I plug that in, that's going to give me minus 1 over 8. And then if I do if I do the last one in the same way, okay, you, you know, you might decide to kind of pause this bit and skip part. Just, just, just have a go, see if you can do this bit. All right, so a half C3. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. So I've got a half factorial. And then it's going to be over a half minus 3 factorial and times 3 factorial. All right. So a half factorial, now I've got to take it a little bit further. It means this might, whoops, let's put another 2 there. Sorry, I was thinking about the next part. So I've got like minus 5 over 2 factorial. I'm going to leave that bit there because a half minus 3 is minus 5 over 2 factorial. So they're going to conveniently cancel out. 3 factorial is just 6. So that whole thing will give me 3 over 8 and divide that by 6. Um, 
don't make a mistake with the arithmetic here. First time I did this question, I, I kind of did that bit, bit wrong. <laughs> um, I could have just fed it into the calculator, okay? All right, and get one over 16. All right, okay. So now we can actually work out the answer, all right? So we've got one, and then we've got plus four X, and then we've got minus a negative there, um, and then one eighth of 64, which is eight x squared. And then we've got um, one sixteenth of 512, which is 32, I hope. Right, now, last bit of the question, okay, part B. Part B, now a lot of people get a little bit stumped by this. Explain how you could use x equals 1 over 32 to get an approximation for root 5. Well, let's just have a quick look and see how it works. So, if you sub in, the best thing to do if you're not sure is just sub in x equals 1 over 32 into 1 plus 8x over a half. Now, if you sub that in, get 1 plus, so 8 over 32, that's a quarter, isn't it? Okay. So, half, right. 1 plus a quarter, so that's 5 quarters. Right. So if I subbed in 1 over 32, it'd like give me this bit here. Remember, I want to get root 5. Well, now wait a minute, what's root 4? Root 4 is, is 2. So this would be the same as root 5 over 2. So if I sub that in, it would give me the answer to that. But remember, I want the answer for just root 5. So if you sub it in, Get the answer to this, and then just multiply your answer by 2. And then that would give you an approximation for root 5. All right? So just have a go at these. You know, when I'm not sure about this, I just substitute in. Sometimes think about it as a top-heavy fraction, and then think about where you're trying to get to. Quite often, this bit would be a nice square number. All right? There you go.